Welcome back everyone, Eric with the Savvy Campers. Today, we're going through the great debate of lithium versus lead acid. Before we begin, if you're really interested in lithium batteries, we've got a lot of other videos that we've gone through load testing, we've gone through um, comparisons, we've gone through a lot of other things, so make sure to subscribe and you can go through and check out those videos. And then we'll also have feature videos featuring lithium and installation and in the actual RV uh, usage and we'll go through um, how some of that works and how we like them. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned. One of the first things I want to point out with lithium batteries versus lead acid is the weight difference. This battery weighs 36 pounds. This battery weighs 23 pounds. But the big difference is this lithium battery right here has 105 amp hours of usable energy and this lead acid battery has only 45. So if we're doing the math on this and figuring out how much weight per amp hour on the lead acid, we've got 0.8 pounds per amp hour. On the lithium, we've got 0.22 pounds per amp hour. That's a lot less weight per usable amp hour. So if we are looking at a total battery bank of lead acid, we would have two batteries would equal about 72 pounds on the tongue of our trailer, and we would have 90 amp hours of usage, comparable to one of these lithium batteries, which would have 105 amp hours of usage, and it would only be 23 pounds. If you're comparing two lithium batteries to two lead acid batteries, you've got 72 pounds versus 46 pounds, that's a huge difference. You would have 210 usable amp hours versus only 90 with lead acid. And that is, weight is one of the big differences. And that, that uh, plays into effect a little bit later in the video when we get into uh, using some go six volt golf cart batteries to try to get comparable amp hours to comparable amp hours on lead acid. And that's when you'll see that these things really shine. When you look at the size of lithium versus lead acid, this is a group 24. And so in reality, they're, they're about the same size. So um, at least these batteries, if you get into a larger golf cart battery or a group 31, something like that, you'll have a little more length. Um, so in order to put them on the tongue of your trailer, you might need to get new battery boxes or um, widen your, uh, our, our our trailer has a little chassis that the batteries sit in so that you actually might have to um, take a uh, sawzall something cut it off and actually re-weld it on into a wider stance if you wanted to get like a six volt golf cart to get more amp hours than a 12 volt system on a lead acid battery typically you'll get 300 to 400 cycles of 50 percent discharge on a life of a battery looking at lithium these batteries are warranted up to 3,500, 100% depth of discharge cycles. Um, talking with Lion Energy, they've said that they consistently can get up to 5,100% depth of discharge on the batteries, but then also that if you only discharge them 50%, something like that, um, not 100% depth of discharge, you could actually get more cycles. So really this battery will only last about 10% of the length that this lithium would last. So lithium versus lead acid maintenance wise, um, this is a sealed lead acid, so really there's not a whole lot of maintenance besides trickle charging in the winter. We bring it in from our RV, but most uh, trailer batteries or deep cycle, it is a wet cell, so you do have to check the water level and you have to add distilled water to fill up your cells so you don't, your water doesn't evaporate and then your cells see oxygen and then they get permanently damaged. Um, golf cart batteries, if you move to a six volt system, you'll have, you'll have to keep them watered uh, typically. And some of them you can get a self watering system where you just plug in, um, plug it in, but those are a little bit expensive, maybe a hundred or $200. And so is it worth it to get that when you can just spend a little bit more and upgrade to lithium? So let's get into a little bit of the charging differences. So this lead acid battery right here, we've got two of them on our trailer. They'll typically charge at about 15 amps a piece. Um, so really we're getting about 30 amps total out of our charger and uh, charging a lead acid battery, they have to have a three, three cycle uh, charging or three charging cycles. 
First, you've got the bulk charge cycle, and that's where it really just charges at a high amperage. Then you've got the absorption stage where it lowers the amperage, and then you have the float stage to basically top it off. And so yes, you can say, okay, I use 45 amps and I can charge at 15 amps, so that would be three hours, but it's not really three hours to charge this battery because you have those different stages. The first hour and a half might go at 15 amps, and then it goes to seven amps, and then it goes to five amps, and then it floats at two amps. So charging the last 10 amp hours at two amps is gonna take about five hours. So this battery does charge a lot slower than a lithium. A lithium, these batteries you can charge at really high amperage for the whole amount of time until it's full. Looking at a lithium battery, these batteries can charge at 100 amps continuous until they're full. So that means that if you drain 100 amps out of this battery and you've got two of them, you can charge at 200 amps to bring them up to full. So theoretically 100 amps each, so it would take an hour to charge. Most of us don't have a charger like that on our travel trailer, but if you can charge at 54 amps or 30 amps, you can really charge these quickly. So next, let's talk discharge rate. These Lion Energy batteries can discharge at 150 amps continuous. If you go over 150 amps, you have about 50 seconds before the BMS shuts it off. Such a high discharge rate really is beneficial if you want to run a microwave, if you want to run your coffee pot, if you want to run your AC on battery. You need something with a high discharge rate, and especially if you have an inverter, you'll want something with a higher discharge rate. So looking at the discharge rate of a lead acid, and I'll show a quick clip of us testing this lead acid battery. What you're seeing is our amp meter measuring a, about a 77 amp load on this lead acid battery, and it just can't handle it. We have to disconnect the load and then connect it back in because the low voltage um, cutoff comes on on the inverter. So in reality, we're only getting about 20 amp hours out of this 90 amp hour battery because the load is just too much. Now we're testing the Lion Energy UT1300 105 amp hour battery and we are able to get 102 amp hours out of it on this load of about 70 amp hours. And as you can see, the voltage stays consistent pretty much throughout the whole test until the battery's dead. If you put a high discharge rate on, for example, we put a 70 amp hour discharge rate on this battery and we only got about 23 amp hours out of it before it hit the low voltage cutoff on our in inverter. The reason why the battery did not last the full 45 amp hours to about 50% on this lead acid is because we discharged it at such a high rate. And when you, when you have a high discharge rate on lead acid, the battery levels just go down basically from the moment you hook something up, it just goes down like this. Lithium will go at a constant voltage and then at the end of its life, it'll, it'll drop off until you charge it. But the lead acid, it, had, it just took so much amperage out of it, it just kind of did that in a linear down pattern and it took it out of it. Now we let the battery sit, it came up to voltage so we could still use more, but if you still have consistent usage on it, it would basically read this as a dead battery in time to recharge. Lead acid batteries are best when you have a low constant discharge rate. So if you've got your travel trailer plugged in and you're just running the fan here and there, or your exhaust fan, you're running the heater a little bit at night, things like that. Uh, but for the most part, you're just running your propane detector, your smoke detector, your radio, those low discharge things. That's what lead acid is good for. So wiring up these batteries on your travel trailer are basically the same. They've got a positive, both of them, and a negative. So you just plug a lithium in, just like you would a lead acid. Both of these batteries can be wired in both series and par parallel. So um, they're very versatile if you're comparing wiring options. So one thing that happens to us is, especially we have a golf cart with lead acid batteries, and We'll use it, we'll charge it, and then a week later we go to use it and it's not full. Um, and that is because lead acid have a cell, they basically self discharge. Their shelf life, you need to keep charging them. So lead acid will discharge at about 4% uh, per week. In the case of our golf cart, I think it goes about a percent a day. So if we leave it for 
two weeks, 14 days, 14% is a lot of battery life gone. Um, lithium batteries, they're able to hold their, uh, their charge for up to two years without self-discharging. So these are great batteries to have, especially if you throw your trailer in storage and you wanna use it next time. Even if you have a battery cutoff switch, it's great to just cut off everything. You don't have your propane detector, you don't have your phantom loads coming on, but these will still degrade even in storage, even if you have your battery shut off, off, they'll still self-discharge. So before you can go on your next trip, you still have to charge these and they might require a little bit more charging than you think. So make sure to bring your trailer home early and charge them up. Most of us, it's not an issue because we always bring our trailer home uh, the day before so we can get the fridge cool, things like that. Make sure that all the batteries are topped off. So I don't think that the self-discharge between this and this, I don't think for us it's going to be a huge deal. Lithium batteries are basically a solid state battery, so they don't have liquid inside of them like lead acid. So with no liquid to expand and contract, there's no, uh, no venting requirements, there's no vent. So these batteries can be mounted in your trailer actually, uh, whereas a lead acid cannot. So you can mount these lithium batteries under a couch, anywhere to keep them warm. Let's say you go winter camping, because one thing is neither batteries like um, the cold, you can't, you don't want to freeze the lead acid and you don't want to freeze a lithium. Um, they don't really freeze, but you can't charge them under a certain temperature. Uh, you can still discharge though. So going back to when we talked about discharge voltage, so lead acid batteries will discharge and they'll constantly lower in voltage. Um, lithium batteries, they hold their voltage for as long as they can and then and then it, it dives down pretty quickly once you hit a certain voltage. Yes, your voltage does constantly go down, but not like uh, lead acid. And that's especially good for if you have an inverter, if you wanna run your coffee pot, your microwave, things like that. Um, that initial amp load will just tank this battery, whereas this battery will hold voltage more consistently. So looking at charge efficiency, lead acid charges at about 85% efficiency. So that means every amp hour you put in, this battery only takes about 0.85 amp hours. So basically 85%. Lithium batteries charge efficiency is a bit higher at about 99%. So that means for every amp hour you put in, you'll get about 0.99 amp hours out of it. So um, this fact is especially important if you have solar. If you have solar, and you rely on a few hours of sun. Typically in our area, we live in the Northwest, so I calculate it as you get basically five good hours of sunlight for good solar charging. And when we charge our batteries, we our, our two panels, it's a 200 watt system, we typically get about eight to nine amp hours um, at a time. I've gotten higher, but that's about average. Um, lots of times we go in the trees and camp, so we actually might only charge at two amp hours. But if you're charging about eight or nine amp hours, let's say you're charging at 10 amp hours and you charge for two hours, you'd get 20 amp hours in this battery. But in a lead acid battery, you would only get 17 amp hours. So there's three amp hours in that charging cycle that you could get more out of this battery than this battery. So looking at the built-in safety features of this lithium battery, it's got a BMS system, which uh, will shut off the battery if it's too high of voltage, too low of voltage, too high of current, too high of temp, or too low of temp. So really it's there to protect these cells from any permanent damage. Lead acid batteries don't really have a BMS system to protect them, but it's a little bit different chemistry and you need to have some protection on lithium so you don't do permanent damage to your expensive battery. Whereas lead acid, um, you don't need a BMS to monitor the cells. Let's talk cost. That's the big elephant in the room. Lithium is expensive, or is it? This battery with our coupon code Savvy Campers, you'll find in the link and the description below, you can get for about $850. This battery, you can get for about $114. If you have two of these lead acid batteries on your trailer and you need to replace them, it'll cost you about 230 bucks to get two new batteries. This battery being 850 is a significant more amount of money, but you can take two of these and buy one of these and you still have 15 more amp hours of usable capacity than two of these. Lithium's big advantage 
is the lifespan. These batteries may only last you three years or five years, depending on how, how long you use your trailer. It might last four years, it might last two years. If you discharge them past 50% one time because you were out in the middle of nowhere, you didn't have a way to charge and you needed heat that night, you might have done permanent damage. So these batteries might not last two years or three years, but typically you'll get three to five years out of them before you uh, notice a huge uh, reduction in amp hour capacity and you want to replace them. These batteries you can get on through their warranty 3,500 cycles. So if you use these about once a day, you could get 10 years out of this battery. If you use it a couple times a month for a three month camping season, a four month camping season, these are really the last batteries you'll ever have to buy. Let's talk an example of replacing this battery with these and we'll just do it as two of these equal about one of these, even though one of these batteries, these Lion Energy Lithiums are still you'll have more more capacity less maintenance lighter weight than two of these so if these batteries lasted for three years and you had and you had a travel trailer for about 15 years it would cost you 1140 dollars to replace your batteries whereas this battery would only cost you 850 dollars during that time frame if your batteries lasted five years and you only had to replace them three times in that 15 year period these batteries would cost you about $690 versus the $850. But if you spent a little bit more on this one, obviously it would still last past the 15 years of that travel trailer, so you could take it and move it to your next one. But you have 15 amp hours more of capacity and you have less maintenance. You don't have to worry about it. The BMS protects it. Overall, it's a better battery for most applications. And we're gonna get into in a little bit later who this battery is really good for. So let's say you're a hardcore boondocker and you, up, you wanna upgrade with six volt golf cart batteries and get a little more amp hour. So let's run through that scenario. Let's look at if you were to replace your 12 volt lead acid system with a golf cart battery type system. So that would mean that you would buy two six volt golf cart batteries and they're uh, 225 amp hours each for the VMAX ones we're going to talk about in this scenario. And they're $279 a piece. So uh, two of them, because you have to get 12 volts, that would run you back about $560 and you'd have about 112 amp hours of usable capacity. If those golf cart batteries lasted you three years a piece, which they should last longer, but let's say they do, you don't take care of them very well, and you have your trailer for 15 years, that would cost you $2,800 for that time period. If those batteries lasted five years a piece, it would only cost you about 1,600 bucks to replace them three times. Um, but still, you have 112 amp hours of usage versus 105 amp hours of usage on one Lion Energy lithium battery. If you wanted to have 225 amp hours of usable capacity, you would need about two of these batteries, which you'd have 210, so you wouldn't quite have it, but you would need four six volt golf cart batteries to make 225 amp hours of usable capacity. And four of those batteries would cost you about $1,120 and they would weigh almost 300 pounds. Whereas if you had two of these, they would weigh about 4,600 pounds, or 4,600 pounds. They would weigh about 46 pounds. And that weight difference is huge. Almost 300 pounds compared to 46 pounds. Cost-wise, you'd be looking at about 16, 1700 bucks for two lithium versus $1,100 plus or minus. So there is a cost savings in using golf cart batteries and they will last you probably five, six years, seven years maybe, um, if you really take care of them. But, but wouldn't it be nice just to have two of these and you have 46 pounds of batteries Okay, so let's get down to the warranty. Lion Energy warranties this product for lifetime. Basically, it's a limited lifetime warranty. There's a charge cycle counter built into the BMS of this battery, and it will let you have 3,500 charges or give you 80% capacity um, if the cells do degrade over time, and they'll warranty this battery across. This battery has a warranty of 12 months and they'll give you a new one if it doesn't meet capacity. They'll also warranty it for up to 30 months as a prorated warranty. So basically, if, if you have it for 15 months, they might give you 50% towards a new battery, but then you still are stuck with buying the same battery. They won't let you get 
a lithium, they won't give you that credit. They'll make, you have to use it on trading in for a new battery. All right, now that we've basically talked about a lot of the advantages of lithium, let's talk about some of the disadvantages. Obviously price, that's the biggest disadvantage. If these things were the same cost, hands down, no one would ever recommend lead acid over lithium. But two of these cost about 230 bucks. One of these costs about $850 with our coupon code. That's a big difference, that's a lot of money. You can replace these batteries for almost 15 years on your travel trailer for the cost of this battery. Obviously, lead acid, you'll have to maintain it, but if you have a sealed lead acid or if you have uh, gel batteries, you don't really have to do much besides trickle charge them, make sure they're off your travel trailer in the winter. Same with this, you have to take it off your travel trailer. Obviously, you could leave it out there, but I would take it off. Um, so you still have that maintenance, but you don't have to trickle charge this over winter. The other big disadvantage of lithium is you cannot charge this below a certain temperature. So if you do a lot of winter camping, you probably wanna stay with lead acid because you can use this at cold temperatures, but once it hits a cold temperature, the BMS will shut off the charging because you can do, to, you can do damage to the cells. One way that you can prevent that, since these don't have any venting requirements, is you can mount these in your travel trailer, under a couch, in a cubby, in a cupboard, uh, under the bed, things like that, that is in a heated space. And all it has to do is keep it above uh, 30 degrees. So obviously if you keep your trailer at 50 degrees or 70 degrees, these batteries would charge and perform well in winter scenarios. But if not, you'll wanna stay with lead acid because yes, you can discharge, but if you can't charge then and you're stuck out there and you have a battery you can't charge and you're camping, you don't want lithium. Now let's look at what scenarios that a lead acid battery would be best for. This is best for if you're a weekend warrior, if you go to campgrounds that only have plug-ins, if you need to go camp in the cold and need to have something that, that can live outside of your trailer and that will be in sub-freezing temperatures, as well as if you don't really need to do a lot of huge loads, like you don't have an inverter, you don't need to run the heater fan, you don't, you don't have a lot of that, lead acid is going to be the battery for you. If you're not boondocking, if, if you don't need to rely on this battery for probably over two or three days without, without charging it, stay with lead acid. You don't need lithium. Don't waste your money. Just keep lead acid. Lithium is for the RVer that is going to go out and be boondocking for two to three days plus. Um, lead acid only lasts us in our trailer and we use it. We have the water pump, we shower, we do things like that. And two of these will last us about uh, two to three days before we need to charge. Uh, this lithium battery obviously would last us the same amount of time if we're comparing 105 amp hours to 105 amp hours, but obviously this, two of these have 90 and this has 105, so we'd get a little more time out of this battery. But if you have two of these batteries, and you are comparing two of these batteries to two of these batteries, you're, you're talking 210 amp hours versus 90 amp hours. That's a big difference, that's a, that's a lot. If you, if you have solar, these batteries are great because they will charge faster, um, both for the efficiency as well as they can intake more amps at, at a time. So solar kit, these batteries are a plus. You can keep them charged, you can use them if you have a couple days that don't have as much sun. So if you are a boondocker with solar, these are the batteries you want. The last big reason that you would want lithium is if you have a lot of large power draws. As we saw, a large power draw, even in the initial brand new state of charge on this battery, it just kills it for the rest of the cycle. Unless you wanna let it sit for 24 hours and kind of reset and then, then you're good to go. But if, if obviously you're not going to use it and then just turn your battery switch off for 24 hours. So these batteries, if you have an inverter, if you've got a lot of, if you're in the wind, uh, cold and you wanna run your heater a bunch, um, if you have a coffee pot, microwave, things to run off battery, lithium is really what you want because it keeps that voltage constant and then when it dies, it'll die. So, um, and these batteries are great because you do have a little voltage meter, so it'll say 20 to 100% in five different LED lights, so you can know where you're at. Obviously, uh, your trailer probably has the same thing. You can push the button and see your state of charge. May not be a super accurate, but at least it's good to know where you're at. So that is it. I hope I cleared up some things on the lithium versus lead acid uh, debacle 
And obviously there's people that lead acid works for and people that lithium works for. Um, we've chosen to go lithium, so I'm happy with that. And hopefully you guys can use this video to make the right decision and either stay with lead acid because you're plugged in and don't need it or move to lithium. So hope that you liked the video. If you do, uh, please subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and hopefully we can uh, clear some things up for you. And once again, uh, Lion Energy has provided us with a coupon code and at Savvy Campers, if you wanna go check them out, see if they're right for you, you can check pricing. We'll see you at the campground.